Well, hi everyone. Welcome to um, a video interview. I'm so excited today to have Rachel Wojo with me. Um, I just say Wojo because I can't pronounce your last name. <laughs> How do you say well, that, it? That's why it's Wojo. <laughs> um, you say every letter, Wojnarowski. So it's Polish and is my married name. So okay. we kind of shorten it for Google purposes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works. It's catchy. Um, so Rachel, I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, I asked Rachel to jump online for a quick video interview. Just um, She's been such an inspiration to me in my walk with God, and I know for so many women, um, and doing this series on a deeper Bible study and how we can grow closer to the Lord through studying the Bible, I thought it'd be great to interview different women about how they do it. So Rachel's graciously agreed to share with us a little bit about her quiet time and how she has found um, that she can grow through a quiet time with the Lord. Um, so Rachel, would you start by just telling us a little bit about you and your family? Sure, sure. Um, I have a blended family. I'm married to a wonderful, wonderful Christian man named Matt, and he um, works in the medical field. And we have seven children. Our oldest daughter is married and lives not too far down the road from us. And then we have a special needs daughter who's 18, and then five children um, who are 13, 11, 10, Six and four. <laughs> That's a lot. So yeah, it's a it's a happening place. Very happening place. Um, it's fun, of course. I grew up in a large family. I have five sisters and three brothers, and um, I'm accustomed to large family living. So it's it's great. We have a great um, a great family and a great church, and um, live in Ohio. Do you really? We do, yeah. I didn't know that. I live in Ohio. Oh, we're probably neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> we just might be. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so with all of that going on, what um, what does your walk with God look like? How do you make that a priority? Because I'm sure you know you just have loads of time to put up your feet and take naps and read your favorite books. <laughs> I know. Um, I think because we have so many children and they're all at different ages and stages and have been, you know, I've experienced the tiny little three babies, you know, changing diapers. I've experienced a lot of different phases of motherhood. And so because of that, um, I've learned to be very gracious to myself with my quiet time and be flexible. Now, granted, there is a special component to giving God the first few minutes of every day. But I found that I also like to give God the best of me. And honestly, I'm not a morning person. I try to be a morning person, <laughs> but I'm just not. My husband and I often joke, like, we can get up and get ready the whole nine yards. Like, you know, brush our teeth, shower, do, do everything, and not even say a word to each other. And we're both totally fine with that because we're just not morning people, you know. I like to just wake up gradually to the day. And so um, I'm not a big talker first thing in the morning. And although I typically pray before I ever even get out of bed, I don't really have this, you know, sweet hour of prayer at 5 a.m. with the Lord. I wish I could tell you I did, but I'd be lying if I said I did. So. Um, so I, I spend just a few minutes first thing when I wake up praying, and especially I find that's a good time to pray for my husband and my kids first thing in the morning like that. I often end the day the same way, praying for them in that manner. But once um, my current schedule is that once my kids and my husband are all out the door, I still have two at home during the day. But I've found that once everyone is gone and I'm down to just the two, then that's when I spend my quiet time. And I usually um, will, you know, journal during that time. And I also have um, a pocket of time before that. My oldest two, um, there's about a half hour between when they have gone to school and when the next two need to get up and go to school. 
So often I have a half hour there where I can spend that time, you know, focused reading or praying. And so it kind of is um, a little, little pockets of time for me, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. It's always been that way. I found that when I was in other seasons of life, you know, there would be times where I was reading or praying in the carpool line, you know. Um, it's just a matter of where your season of life is, and you can grab those those minutes to really be focused on the Lord. So that's what I found works for us in busyness. <laughs> I think that's great because I, I well, I for one know that um, in certain seasons of my life, I've elevated like this ideal of spending one mm. hour of like quiet, uninterrupted time and prayer. Yeah. Um, and. It, I think there's something to that. I really think yes. that, that refreshes and like recharges and rejuvenates re me in a way that um, is just special. But right. just like you said, extending grace and understanding that in certain seasons, like with the little kids or nursing a little one or waking up in the middle of the night four times, it might just right. be a of time. Um, yeah. That's encouraging to hear that. So, yeah. um, during your quiet time, you said you journal and you like to pray. Do you follow like a certain reading plan or how do you do your Bible study? I actually offer um, a monthly topical Bible reading plan on my blog. And so it's, um, it's an everyday plan, a daily plan. And I just offer that each month, usually a couple days before the month begins, and that's the plan that I follow. And it's typically anywhere from five to ten verses. Um, I, in past years, have done much more than that. Even just last year, it was my second or third year reading through the Bible in a year, where you do four chapters a day. And I think there's a time and season for that. It was wonderful reading those four chapters a day. But I find myself soaking up a little more when I shorten it down to just a few verses. And I find that I'm able to really meditate on those verses a little bit more throughout the day and think about them rather than just read it, this volume of information, and try to get it to pass into my brain, you know. I just ha am really enjoying this concentrated um, topical Bible reading plan that we've been doing monthly for a few months now. So that's what I do. I also participate in Bible studies at my church in the local community, or, you know, if I'm teaching a study in the local community, obviously I'll participate in that as well. But I don't really consider that to be a daily... Um, focus between me and the Lord. Like whatever comes of that in an extracurricular manner is wonderful, but I've found that just me and God's Word is so much, you know, it, it really does a lot for me to spend that time that way. I feel like the Holy Spirit just speaks directly to my heart, and I have an opportunity to just be closer to the Lord through that than if I read a big devotional, you know, there's a place for that as well. Sometimes I read a lunch devotional, you know, but I'm just saying that little time with God that I have where I want to talk to him and hear him speak to me personally, I just stay focused right on God's word, nothing more. That's just what works for me. Yeah, I love what you said that there's definitely a time and place for devotionals and group studies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. They've spoken into my life in huge ways, you know, even... um. Just recently, Sheila Walsh sent me a new devotional she has out called Five Minutes with Jesus. Fabulous devotional. And I've been reading that at lunchtime. And it's a quick and easy read and just gives you that extra little, you know, burst of, of encouragement or inspiration to keep you going through the day. So um, I've been using that. In fact, my oldest daughter, was um, she's in, in school um, to become a physician's assistant and so she's very very busy you know cramming with studying and so she borrowed the five minute with Jesus devotional because it's just you know that concentrated little burst it's great for that so there yes definitely a time and place for devotionals and for Bible studies but um, I just found that that there nothing beats just reading God's word and letting him speak to your heart 
Yeah, there's something special about digging in and discovering those nuggets of truth for yourself. Yes. Feeling like, yes. this is for me. Yes. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Very neat. Well, Rachel, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Rachel, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Um, can you tell us where viewers can find out more about you and more about your story? Sure. My website is rachelwojo.com. I have a new book releasing October 20th that is called One More Step. The subtitle is Finding Strength When You Feel Like Giving Up. And this book is really my heart story. I like to say it's my heart work because I just poured myself into it as far as offering the best tools and resources that I'm aware of in order to encourage you through God's Word to keep going. So many times we get discouraged and we just we just want to quit. Mm -hmm. And we feel like, you know, how can I keep going when everything is going wrong? Or, you know, a lot of times we ask ourselves, I, I want to be an overcomer, but all I feel is overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so in answering those questions, this book just really tries to give very practical um, advice, but also some personal examples in my life of how God has worked and kept me going and given me that strength to take one more step. So I, I would love it if readers would check out um, rachelwojo.com or rachelwojo.com slash one more step. Yeah, Sorry, definitely. my phone went off in the middle of that. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, and we're actually going to be giving away a couple of copies of Ooh. your book um, on onethingalone.com. So as you're watching this, um, I think we're going to have the giveaway running through the end of October. So definitely enter that to win. Um, I have a copy of the book coming my way. I'm so excited to read it, Rachel. Thank you so much Good. for sharing your heart with women and um, just encouraging us to, yeah, keep taking that one more step to keep looking for little windows of time to spend with the Lord during the day. I, I so appreciate you and your ministry. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to um, seeing what God does with you in the future. Yeah, it, you know, it's all God. <laughs> we were talking yep. before we started, and, and God calls each of us, and it's amazing to see how he's just using so many women and men online to advance his kingdom. I'm so excited yep. about how awesome. he's it's just orchestrating all of it. It's, yep. it's awesome to see him moving that way. Um, but I will let you go, I know. Okay. Um, what? Over, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. It's um, kind of cloudy. Go. Over yeah, so. yeah, it's supposed to be a little rainy today, but that's okay. We have laundry to do, right? Yes, me too. So we'll be doing laundry together. Rachel, have a fantastic day. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.